Well, ultrasound is a great imaging modality for the gastrointestinal tract in children. It's uh, the ultrasound transducer technology that we have now allows you to see very exquisite detail in the bowel wall, the contents of the bowel, uh, you can assess the vascularity of the bowel. And because it's a real-time examination, you can actually watch motion, so you can see the motility of the bowel. You can really use it as an assisted physical exam because you can use the transducer to compress on the abdomen, and you can tell whether the structure that's under the transducer is actually the point of pain for the patient. Uh, it uh, is a, a non-intimidating modality. It's not a huge piece of equipment, so children tend to not be very afraid, and so you don't have to use um, sedation hardly ever when you do ultrasound. And I guess most importantly is that it doesn't expose the child to ionizing radiation. So you can do repeated ultrasounds, you can do ultrasound for an extended period of time without really worrying about exposing them to any kind of dangerous radiation dose. I think it's really extremely important to pay very close attention to your technique when you do ultrasound. Uh, it is a very operator dependent um, technology, uh, so you've got to be familiar with the techniques. Uh, for ultrasound of the gastrointestinal tract, it's really important to have some fluid in the bowel lumen, particularly if you're looking at the stomach, but also in other parts of the bowel. I think that um, uh, in the United States, uh, we uh, tend to allow the technologists are often doing the examinations without the radiologist present, so we don't have that advantage of seeing the exam in real time, and so we need to be very careful to be sure that we examine the images that are sent to us for interpretation very carefully, to make sure that measurements are done in the proper place, or to look for uh, findings on the images that might suggest that perhaps perhaps the proper technique wasn't used, the patient wasn't in the right position, uh, the bowel was not adequately distended with fluid. Uh, and so I think it's incumbent upon radiologists to really take responsibility for that. Uh, it's important for us to train uh, our residents in residency programs, and I think that's getting harder and harder to, for them to find the time to do that. But I think unless you do that, you're not going to be as successful doing ultrasound of the GI tract in children. Well, there's a lot of them, but uh, I would say that the errors that I see most often these days are in the diagnosis of pyloric stenosis, and they occur for usually one of two reasons. Sometimes it's because the stomach is not adequately distended with fluid, uh, and that can uh, cause the, the pyloric muscle to look abnormally thickened, and so you can get a false positive diagnosis if you do that. On the other hand, if you adequately distend the stomach, sometimes that causes the child to have gastro esophageal reflux, which is very common in young children, and it's surprisingly easy for the sonographer or the radiologist to mistake the gastroesophageal junction for the actual uh, pylorus and duodenum, and so they may uh, call it a normal study uh, when they haven't actually seen the pylorus at all. Uh, so that's a pitfall that definitely needs to be um, attended to.